In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an amazing searchable dropdown to any VBA user form in less than 30 seconds. If you're like me and you love creating high quality VBA applications, then you will be blown away by this functionality. This is the standard combo box for the VBA user form. If you type letters, it will bring you the first item that starts with the letters that you type. By modern standards, this behavior is very limited, which is why I created the searchable dropdown. This is the searchable dropdown. I'm going to show you how exactly the searchable dropdown works, and then I will show you how to install it to any user form in less than 30 seconds. I've got a list of a thousand books, and I want to find, say, the books with castle in the title. As I type the letters of castle, you can see that it filters the list and only matching items appear. If we like, we can use the arrow keys to move up and down the list like this. We can then press enter to select the one that we wish to use. The searchable dropdown has some other useful features as well. Watch now as I change the value to 10 and you can see that 10 items are now displayed. Another feature of this dropdown is the ability to display all the matching records. This means it will still show the top matching items but you can use the scroll bar to view all the other matches in the list. A third feature is case sensitivity. Watch as I type Harry in lowercase. You can see that it only brings back matches that are lowercase. If I turn off the case sensitivity, then it returns all matching Harrys, no matter what case they are. Now creating the searchable dropdown required a lot of complex code. However, I've packaged it into a single class module so that anyone can install and use it with a few simple steps. So let's go ahead and install the searchable dropdown in a brand new workbook. Imagine you have a workbook with a list of sci-fi movies like this, and you also have a user form, and you want to add a searchable dropdown for the movies to this user form. So this is how you do it. Step one, download the searchable dropdown from the description below the video. Step two, extract the three files to the folder of your choice and then drag the searchable dropdown class module file to the project like this. Step three, add a new text box and list box to the user form by dragging them from the toolbox. Now the position of the list box doesn't matter as it will be positioned automatically. Step four, open the readme file. Then select and copy the code from step four in the readme file. Then switch to the user form and press F7 to view the user form code, then paste the code here. Step five, go back to the readme file and select and copy the code from step five. We will copy this code to a standard module. It is used to display the user form. Now we have a working searchable dropdown control. Let's see it in action by running the code. We click in the standard module sub and press F5 to run the code. If I type the word alien, you can see it filtered the data in the list box as I type. We can then select any one we want by using the arrow keys and pressing enter. Now that you've seen how to add the searchable dropdown functionality, let me show you some important things to note so you will get the most out of this control. So now I'm going to explain exactly how the code works. It's actually a lot more simple than you might think. You don't need to know anything about class modules to use it. There are three parts to using the searchable dropdown class. Part one is setting up the class module object. Part two is assigning the controls and the data that you're going to use. Part three is configuring the settings, which in most cases we may not need to change at all. Let's look at each of these in turn. We declare and create the variable as a private member of our user form, like you can see here. We can now access the class by using the oEventHandler variable. When we are finished with the variable, we set it to nothing to avoid memory issues. And we do this in the terminate event. So this is a sub that runs when the user form closes. So this is all we have to do with the variable. So once we have access to the variable, we need to connect the class to the text box and this box controls. We can then use our searchable dropdown class to override their standard behavior. These lines here attach the text box and list box to our searchable dropdown class. One thing to keep in mind is that if you change your text box or list box name, then you must change it here as well. For example, if we change the text box name to text box movie and compile the code, we get this error. But now if we change the name, it works fine. The list property that you can see here is used to set the list of items that will be filtered by our control. 
I have set it here in the list data property. This allows us to set it from the code that displays the user form. We create our user form and then on this line, we pass our range of data to the user form. We then in turn pass this in the property to the searchable dropdown class, like you can see here. Let's take a look at the settings, which are the most interesting part of the searchable dropdown as they allow us to alter the behavior and do some really cool things. These settings that I use here are set to the default value. So if you delete them, the searchable dropdown will still work the same way. I've put them here so that you can see how to easily change the behavior of the searchable dropdown by just changing values. So let's look at max rows. This is the number of rows that is displayed in the control. This is how it works. If we type AL, then the first six items that contain AL are displayed in the dropdown, as you can see here. Now we set the max rows to 10. When we run the code again, you will see that typing AL will now display 10 items instead of six, which we saw previously. One thing to remember is that if the number of items is less than the max rows, then only this number of items will be displayed. For example, if we type ALL space, then only two items will be displayed even if the max rows is set to six or 10. Show all matches means that all items that match are loaded to the dropdown. However, only the specified number of rows are visible at any time. Let's take a look. We set max rows back to six and we set show all matches to be true. We run the code again. Now when we type AL, you can see that it shows us six items, but we can see that we've got a scroll bar on the right hand side. Now when we go down through the scroll bar, you can see that it lists all the items that match AL. The next thing we can set is the case sensitivity of the search. To set it, we set compare method to VB text compare or to VB binary compare. At the moment, it is set to text compare, so this means it's not case sensitive. Currently, if we type something like space, it brings us back all the titles containing the word space, even though you can see some are uppercase and some are lowercase. This is the default, but if we want to make our filter case sensitive, then we can use VB binary compare instead of VB text compare. Let's change this to VB binary compare and run the code again. Now we type space in lowercase letters and you can see it only displays the titles where the word space is in lowercase. This time we use uppercase letters and you can see it only brings back the title where space is all uppercase. If we type just the first letters as uppercase, you'll see that it brings back only the ones where case matches. So this is how we do case sensitivity. Now the last setting, Windows version, you can ignore most of the time. If you're using a Mac, then you should set this to false. Otherwise, you can leave it as true. I've included an example workbook in the download so you can easily try out the settings for yourself without having to keep stopping and starting the code, as you can see here in this example. Remember, you can get the download with this example and the searchable dropdown code from the description below the video. I use class modules to implement this dropdown. If you'd like to learn more about class modules, then check the playlist on the screen to learn more. If you enjoyed this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. Thank you for watching.